What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Maths Guy. Today we're looking at how to add three digit numbers with bridging. Let's jump into it. Okay, so today we're going to look at these two examples here. Number one, 452 add 19. And number two, 468 add 56. And we're going to follow these two steps of success. We're going to use column labels and we're going to start with the smallest value. Let's look at what that means then. So first of all, when looking at the number 452 add 19, it's important to put our column labels on top. So let's have a look at 452 to start with. And I can see the two is in the ones column, the five in the tens, and the four in the hundreds. And then with the 19, the nine is in the ones, and my one is in the tens column. That means that when I put my ones, tens, and hundreds in my columns for column addition, it makes it much easier to put the numbers in the right place. So looking at 452, I can see I have a 2 in the 1s, 5 in the 10s, 4 in the 100s, nothing too complicated there. But rather than making the mistake of putting the 1 and the 9 here, which a lot of people do, I can see that my 9 is in the 1s column and my 1 is in the 10s column. If that was a little bit tricky to understand, go back and watch that part again because this is really important for column addition. Now I can put my equal sign and my plus sign to remind me I'm doing addition, and I can go. The second tip was this one here. It said start with the smallest value, and the smallest value will be my ones in this case. So I'm gonna start by adding up my ones, and I have two add nine. Well, two add nine equals 11, and I don't wanna put 11 down here because this column is only supposed to have one digit in it, and obviously 11 is a two-digit number, so what can I do? Well, I can look at my 11 again over here, and I can see that I have a one in the ones column and a one in the tens column. So what I can do is I can put my one from the ones column down here in the answer column, but I can put the one from the tens column up here and add it to my tens that are waiting to be added up. So I've just split this 11 into its ones and tens or the fancy word is partitioning that 11. Okay, now I can move across and work out all of my tens. And this time I have a five plus a one plus another one. And that equals five plus one is six plus the other one is seven. So I can put seven as I have seven tens. And then over here in my hundreds, well I have a four on its own. So what I could do is put this little zero here to act as a placeholder, but it doesn't change the answer. But this little placeholder is very good practice to get into, particularly when we get into subtraction, which we'll look at in the next video. So four add zero is four. Leaving my answer to 452 plus 19 equals 471. Let's put that up here. Awesome. Awesome, let's have a look at question two. And again, start by putting our ones, tens, hundreds, and then ones and tens. This is a really good practice to get used to because then I put my ones, tens and hundreds in my columns and I can see that I have eight ones, six tens and four hundreds and then in my 56, six ones and five tens. Put my equal sign and my addition and I'm ready to go. Let's start with our smallest value, the ones and I have eight plus six which equals 14 and again I have that problem that this is a two digit number so I'm going to look at my 14 and I'm going to put my ones and tens and now I can see that the ones can go into the answer of the ones column which is a four and the one that's in the tens column can go down here into the tens I haven't really left a very good space for it but we can see that it's there now I can look at my tens column and I can see I have a six out of five and my one let's not forget it and six add five is eleven plus one equals twelve and same thing again I have a two digit answer and now this gets a little bit confusing because what we're doing is we're adding tens so really this is 60 plus 50 plus 10 so the answer actually is 120 we've just looked at it a little bit differently because it's in the tens column we're just looking at the single digits but this is actually a 60 this is a 50 and this is a 10 so our answer is 120 so therefore we have nothing in the ones column, we don't need to worry about that. We have two in the tens column and a one in the hundreds column. That means I can bring my two into the answer and my one 
into the question. And now I can simply add up my hundreds and I have a 4 and a 1 which gives me 5. So the answer to 468 plus 56 is 524. That can get a little bit confusing. I really suggest watching that part again so that you get a full and good understanding before you move on. Let's look at what to remember. Always begin by putting the column labels. That is really, really important. I cannot express how important that is. Insert the numbers by putting the smallest value in line first and then begin adding from the smallest value. And if the answer is more than a one digit answer, then you need to bridge to the next column or partition those numbers and put them into the correct columns. Your turn. Have a go at answering these two questions. When you have an answer, put the answers into the comment section. I'm gonna try and mark them all. And there we go. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, think about subscribing to the channel. But for now, guys, I'm going to see you in another video. Peace out. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at subtraction, and we're going to involve borrowing. Let's jump into it. Okay, we're going to use these two tips to start with. We're going to use column labels, and we're going to start with the smallest value. But we need to be very careful when we fill in our numbers because subtraction can get very tricky. Let's understand what I mean. So let's have a look at first 452. Well, we can see we have 2 in the 1s column, 5 in the 10s, and 4 in the 100s. And then in my 35, I have 5 1s and 3 10s. Now when I put my 1s, 10s, and 100s, I can quite simply put these numbers into the correct place by seeing 452 two ones, five tens, four hundreds. And again with the 35, five ones, three tens. Now I have this little gap here underneath the four and next to the three, and then here I'm gonna put a placeholder, a zero. Doesn't change my 35's value, but it's just gonna help us with the subtraction. My equals line and my subtraction sign. Here we go. Now, my second step said to start with the smallest value. And in this case, it's in my ones column. And my question says to subtract five, and that is very important. The number on the top is always going to go first, and then the number on the bottom will go second. So my question says to subtract five. So many people will see this and think, ah, I can just do five subtract two. That's much easier. Well, five subtract two is gonna give you three, and that is the wrong answer. My question says two, subtract five, so that is what I have to do. That is the most important part of this lesson. If you flip those numbers around and put five, subtract two, you will get the wrong answer. You have to do it in order. The number on the top goes first, and the number on the bottom goes second, because we're taking this five away from the two. Okay, so let's do two, subtract five. And I'm gonna put my two counters, one, two, and we can see that it is impossible to take five because there are only two. So what do we do? Well, we're gonna use this magic word up here. We are going to borrow. So at the moment in my ones column, I only have this little two. Well, I want to make this two bigger. What's bigger? Well, tens. The value in my tens column is bigger than the value in my ones column. So I can look at this number here and understand that this five actually is a 50 because five tens equals 50 and the five is in the tens column. So what I can do is I can borrow a whole 10 from here and turn that into 40 and I can show that by crossing it out and putting a four. But that means I've taken a whole 10 away that I can come and put here in front of the two. So I can turn this two into a 12. Okay, that's a little bit confusing, isn't it? But essentially what we've done is we've taken this five, we've turned it into a four, and we've given the one over here to the ones column. So that now my question reads 12 subtract five. And this I can do because now I have my one and my two, and I can add the 10 that we borrowed. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, giving me a total of 12. And now when I take away five, I can say one, two, three, four, five, and that leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whew, that was tricky, wasn't it? Just to get that first part of the answer, wow. Now I can look at my next column, which shows 
4 subtract 3. Well, 4 subtract 3 equals 1. And then my last column says 4 subtract 0, and that equals 4. So my answer to 452 subtract 35 is 417. Put the answer up here. Let's have a super quick go at the next one. Put my 1s, 10s, 100s, my 1s and 10s. Arrange my columns with the labels on the top. 1, 10s, 100s, 1, 1, 3, 10s, 400s, and my 46 is 6 1s, 4 10s. Put my equals sign and my subtraction sign and include my placeholder 0, and I'm ready to begin. First question says 1 subtract 6. Well, again, I cannot do 1 subtract 6 because if I only have 1, I cannot take 6 away. So I'm going to look next door and see this 3, put it down to a 2, and borrow the 1. So I've taken a whole group of 10 away from the 10s and given it to my 1s, turning a 1 into an 11. So now my question says 11 subtract 6, which equals 5. So I have a 5 as the answer to the 1s column. Now my 10 says 2 subtract 4, but actually what this is saying is 20 subtract 40. Remember, these 2 and 4 are in the 10s column. But I, either way, I can't do it because 2 subtract 4 I cannot do without getting into negative numbers. So I'm going to again look next door and I'm going to see this big nice 4, cut him down to a 3 and borrow the 1, which means I've put a 1 in front of that 2. So effectively, I've now got 120 subtract 40, or in other words, in my columns, 12 subtract 4, which equals 8. So I can put an 8 as the answer in my tens column. My hundreds column says 3 subtract 0. Nice and easy. That's going to equal 3. So the answer to 431 subtract 46 is 385. Awesome. Let's look at what to remember. Always begin by putting your column labels. By putting those 1, tens, and hundreds, you are less likely to make a mistake. Begin subtracting from the smallest value, and we must always subtract from the top number. Remember, that is the most important part of this whole lesson. If there is not enough, we can borrow. And where do we borrow from? Next door. Your turn. Have a go at answering these two questions. Put your answers into the comments section. I'm going to make sure I mark every single one. And there we have it, guys. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, find a buddy to share it with. But for now, guys, I'm going to see you in another video. Hope this has been good. Peace out.